what I, what I will start by saying is that uh, a project of this magnitude takes some time to develop. And as you've seen, uh, there are a number of parties that are involved and the conversations have been going on. So um, it is not really five years uh, uh, to implementation, but there are a number of things that have to be put in place before implementation starts. So that is a position. Um, the project is not delayed per se, but that is when the development started in 2015. So uh, I, I believe that uh, we are still on course and uh, now with the coming of GE, we should be set to go. Um, so it's Maggie uh, this time around. I want to touch on the environmental issues that have been raised, especially with the residents. And uh, we've seen a lot of opposition, of, uh, especially from Kenya, even until now. Was there an assessment done, especially in regards to environmental risks? Yes, uh, uh, what we started by doing is uh, to do the environmental impact assessment and we engaged a number of experts that did the various studies and the final report was submitted to the National Environmental Management Authority who are mandated by law to look at the report and license uh, the project. This was done and submitted and during this period there was a lot of public consultations and the information that we're passing around to people within Lamu. And uh, at the end of it all, uh, we did finalize the report that we submitted and were licensed. Uh, what I can say is during uh, these studies, we engage a lot of experts uh, from within Kenya and also internationally, uh, to name but just a few. We had experts from South Africa, we had experts from Australia, we had experts from Dubai. So the process that we took is what is mandated under the Environmental Management and Coordination Act, which, are law, which is a law in Kenya that uh, governs the process that one has to take if you have to implement a project. And before any commencement of any works, the environmental impact assessment has to be issued. Right now, uh, well, let's just touch now on what uh, General Electric is doing um, uh, and some of the possibly best practices exchanges from out, out across the world. Um, the world research and development on search exceeds $1 billion per year. So we do know that the mother company, in this case, which will be Centum and uh, General Electric coming into this, they have the buckets uh, to do that. But you'll help us uh, understand what kind of funds are going particularly into this clean coal aspect. Uh, the total cost of the project is approx approximated to be $2 billion. And what the, the new technology will fit exactly into that. Uh, previously, the te technology that we're going to implement is uh, what we call the supercritical technology. But we have upgraded that for purposes of uh, ensuring that our environment is clean. And we've gone to the ultra supercritical technology, which is much cleaner and more efficient. So the, the total cost of the project is not changing and the uh, end tariff of the power that we produce will remain the same. Right now, in regards to uh, favorability of the policies so far, so we just had the conversation on nuclear energy and we were wondering along the same lines, so do we need to draft a new set of policies that you'll see a lot more um, uh, uh, well within that ecosystem funding into uh, clean coal or clean possibility of energy or is the current uh, environment as conducive? Uh, the government has got uh, policies uh, that govern investment in this sector. And uh, as, 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 uh, so as long as uh, I think, uh, I don't think there will be new policies. Uh, we've got to live with the policies, but if the government at some point feels that it is important to change those policies, uh, the government can go ahead and do that. Just help us understand, now if the plan takes off, well, it's going to do that, especially in a few months. It's going to generate about 1,050 megawatts, and uh, that's nearly half of the current installed power capacity in Nairobi. Now, uh, currently, it's at about 56%. That's as of 2017. I just want to ask, is it actually uh, needed? Does the country really need this extra power? In fact, uh, the, the plan by the government was to generate 5,000 megawatts uh, in a short period of time. This particularly will go to power the counties, 
uh, previous, in the previous constitution, we did not have independent counties. These days we have got two levels of government. There is the national government and there is the county. So part of this power is projected to go and develop the counties. And also, the government is, uh, is, is promoting what we call the big four, that is manufacturing, uh, universal health care, housing, and uh, agriculture. So <coughs> part of the power that is going to be generated will go into irrigation projects, it will go into manufacturing uh, projects, and the other two uh, of the big four. So uh, I don't think that uh, really we have got over capacity, but the planning that the government has put in place is just, uh, you know, spot on to be able to do exactly that. Right now, let's speak about the, that bit a bit more on financing. Now, you had received 120 billion from ICBC, uh, that's July 2016, when we saw this uh, pickup conversation. Uh, together with Stanbic, the, they provided a joint $300 million. And within the consortium, we saw Gulf Energy and Sichuan Electric Power Company. Now, with GE coming in, how does this distort your business model, or at least equity financing on your part? 